No, yeah. I mean, that's what that's what that's what is so sort of jarring about this conflict is that it's really like an end of history sort of types of civil war. I, totally. I mean, that's you know, in the you know, totally. you guys know how I mean that. Yeah. But like, you know, if, if this had taken place in any other decade, right, there would be absolutely ideological factors going into. This. And mm-hmm. obviously, there's ideological factors going into this. But I'm using the shorthand, like you know, there's no. There's no one on either side fighting for capitalism or for right. communism or any of the you know the great clash of ideas or anything like that. Like that clash is over. In, in or in, even in the like mafia respect, where it was about family or it was patrimonial or it had this sort of. It's completely. I mean, yeah. even in Brazil, where this is. I mean, the gangs in Brazil with Bolsonaro's kids. Even though there's that kind of like lineage, there is absolutely none of that none. kind of old style, and it is. I mean, it's really similar, strikingly similar too, with the way it kind of bleeds into uh, the I would government say and backers. E- even more in Mexico, because you know, in, in in Brazil, you know, you have them killing like left wing politicians occasionally and stuff like that. And I mean, that's not necessarily because they're left wing; it's because they are a rival politician. I mean, I'm sure they would they would do it to anybody. But in Mexico, it's like it, 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 there there is there is. I mean, there's not even a, a point to winning it exactly. Like they're no. not trying yeah. to take over the state. They're not trying to, you know, overthrow the central government. And and it comes out, you know, of this lineage, right? Of like, you know, School of the Americas, uh, you mm-hmm. know, starting in, in, in Panama, and then then well, it wasn't called that then, but then moving moving to the U.S. and training all of these, you know, death squads, including a large proportion of which were, were members of the Mexican military, mm-hmm. to massacres conducted by the Mexican military, specifically, you know, speaking of the Olympics, '68 Olympics. Uh, you know, and, 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 and these, these death squads in these other countries often becoming, whether if they're not in the state, eventually becoming the state and being part of that or becoming criminal gangs in opposition to the state, you know, in, in, in places where the, uh, the right wing opposition might've lost or destabilizing a government to where a country is super underdeveloped and there is room for these play, you know, uh, you know, large criminal organizations to grow. And then of course you have drugs, which are, you know, Obviously, the rise of cocaine and heroin in the seventies and eighties, and then especially the uh, let's say p- possibly some federal government intervention there uh, <laughs> in terms of mm. crack cocaine, which I got to say they did knock it out of the park on that one. But uh-huh. uh, it is uh, it, you know, and and then that you know be flooding flooding inner cities in the U.S., especially black communities, which is you know where it was targeted. You mm-hmm. know, all of these things like added up, and then the ideological conflict that like fueled all of this ended. And yeah. like like you mentioned earlier, the 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 the, the Gaffe guys, uh, you know, killing, you know, mutilating these these peasants during the ninety four uh, Zapatista uprising, same year as NAFTA going into effect. Like, uh, you know, that is that is like almost no coincidence because that is like a such a clear demarcation line. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, definitely. Um, with regard to the reference you're just making to, you know, the, the dark alliance thing and the and the true roots of the the mm-hmm. original roots of the Mexican cartel system, you know, in the 1970s and 80s, um, I doubt we have time to go into it now. But yeah, definitely one day let's talk about um, the story of uh, Caro Quintero, uh, Kiki Camarena, uh, yep. Manuel Buendia, and Gary Webb, all of which could be neatly summarized mm-hmm. yeah. uh, by the title of uh, Buendia's book, La CIA in Mexico, uh, the CIA in Mexico, uh, which he published shortly before he was uh, mysteriously killed by unknown uh, assailants. Um, but with regard to the um, non-ideological aspect of it, yes, there is not a wit of ideology around any of this. If there ever was, um, then it's gone now. And that kind of makes it uh, extra terrifying, in my view, the fact that there is no end game, um, and that you have a kind of like, I don't know if you want to call it, just like sort of super libertarian or just uh, yeah. criminal capitalistic um, sort of post-historical, um, apocalyptic, dystopian um, outcome with these groups fighting uh, over, fighting each other for no for no political purpose um, and narco capitalism. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And when you drive through these places, you know the, the last time I'll, I'll refer constantly to Nuevo Laredo in the in yeah. the context of Los Cetas. And the last time I drove through there in November of this year of last year, man. You know, so on the highways, I mentioned this to you guys before the show. On the highways, that, which are still controlled by the federal government, um, the all you see are factories, maquilladores, and just stank ass pollution. You can smell it. Um, it's absolutely horrible. Um, nature has been destroyed. Civilization has been destroyed in these places uh, that were once very beautiful, um, 
and that, you know, that I, I first developed a, a, an affection for and a familiarity with, you know, in the late 1990s as a kid driving around Northern Mexico with my parents back when it was a completely different world, uh, back when these little towns were kind of like a preserved remnant of old Mexico. Uh, when, you know, as a suburban kid from Texas, you know, you could see things like, you know, street markets and like, you know, horses clopping around on cobblestones and like plazas full of life and so forth, mariachi bands. And, you know, to me as a kid and never been outside the country before, it was fucking cool, man. It was, it was great. Um, and it's all totally gone now. It's destroyed outside of the big cities, the rural areas are where it's really dangerous. Mm-hmm. These zones, uh, the security situation there, it's like Yemen or Somalia, Um, you can't enter, there are checkpoints, um, the, the Mexican military can't enter. Um, and you have these little bandit towns where it's just like, you know, history really has come, come to an end, um, in these places.